What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So we know that the Super Mario movie isn't coming out until 2023, Miyamoto himself told us this. But something strange happened online over the last couple of weeks after a post was spotted that appeared to spoil a large chunk of the movie. I'm not gonna go over the details as the spoilers, but this whole thing's taken a very interesting turn and we're gonna go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about a screenshot that's appeared online, leading people to question if the new Forza Motorsport truly is just a next-gen only title. And we're also gonna be talking about more studio acquisitions as rumors have started to swirl. This one though is a bit more interesting as it appears that we could be seeing studios getting broken up. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all of the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Switch Sports. Came out on Friday and I've had a chance over the weekend to play it. And surprisingly, the game that I'm having the most fun with is soccer. I, I did not expect that to be the case. I thought it'd be mostly doing bowling, but soccer is kind of similar to Rocket League, just not as fast. Definitely worth checking out there. But as we would expect, if you're around during the, the Wii Sports days, with Switch Sports should come broken displays and TVs. In fact, that's already happened. We can see this post up over on VGC, 24 hours after the release of Switch Sports. A player has already been captured accidentally smashing their television. You can see some of the clip here. This is from streamer 63 man who uh, just, well, chucked their Joy-Con into the bottom corner of their screen, got it on camera there. This is during tennis, which, is not new. I mean, back during Wii Sports, there were several incidents caught on camera. One famously was on like a home shopping network where the person chucked the tennis racket into the into the screen while they're trying to sell you on tennis and the Wii, which uh, probably probably didn't work out so well on that channel when it comes to people calling in to buy them. But hey, Nintendo does tell you to use that wrist strap and while they're doing it for legal reasons, yeah, they're also trying to save you potentially thousands of dollars in equipment. Also, we did have Xbox Live games with gold revealed for the month of May. And uh, let's take a look. We can see Yoku's Island Express that's available May 1st to the 31st. The Inner World, The Last Wind Monk that's available May 16th to June 15th. Hydro Thunder Hurricane, available May 1st to the 15th. Viva Pinata Party Animals, available May 16th to the 31st. No real way to dress this up. Pretty underwhelming over, I mean, Hydro Thunder's fun. Uh, that's a good time there. I would definitely look towards that one. Viva Pinata is kind of like a, kind of like a mini game party style game that you can play with a bunch of friends if you have them over and try something different. Otherwise though, nothing really jumps off the screen to me here. And look, we know with Xbox Live games with gold, it's not Microsoft's focus. They are really laser focused on Game Pass. And Games with Gold just feels like it's an obligation for them while they try to figure out what they're gonna do with Xbox Live Gold overall. I, I feel like eventually it's just gonna be absorbed into Game Pass and we'll just have that one subscription. But for now, I like to bring these up because if you're subscribed to Gold, you might as well claim these and add them to your library. Oh, and last year we did have Psychonauts 2 release. I was very happy to see how it turned out and it's showing up on a lot of people's game of the year list. I think it was an awesome game and it's good to see this series still alive and well here in uh, in 2021 now into 2022. In fact, it looks like we had at least a, an idea of the sales numbers for this. This was posted up over on Twitter from Lisette Montgomery, who's the art director of our Double Fine, saying, uh, my leadership resulted in shipping Double Fine's highest rated and best selling game to date. Nominations awards include Not Limited 2, Game of the Year, Best Art Direction Adventure Game of the Year. Now, this was posted up to let everyone know that it was her last day at Double Fine and how much they've learned over the last four years. But this kind of gives us an idea based on what Eurogamer has mentioned that Psychonauts 2 appears to have sold over 1.7 million copies if we're taking the words here at face value, it being the best selling game from Double Fine, which is great for the series now. For, uh, for Psychonauts, a game that I just didn't think would really ever see that sequel. We got the crowdfunding that took place, then Microsoft came in, added some money at the end to help them with polishing the title and turn into a Game of the Year nominee. So fantastic stuff there. And I hope this means that, I mean, over 1.7 million sold alongside of Game Pass, which probably got a lot of exposure. This means that this will turn into a legitimate series for Double Fine and Microsoft, whenever they're ready to make another game in the series. I understand Double Fine might wanna go off and do something else, but here's hoping they remember Psychonauts and eventually we get a third one. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the Super Mario movie. Again, it's coming out next year in 2023. Miyamoto told us on Twitter, 
So a lot of people were a bit disappointed, obviously, to hear that we have to wait a bit longer for it. However, it sounds like just more work is going to be put into this movie to make it better. And after seeing the success of Sonic 2, it's not surprising Nintendo would want to make sure this movie is as good as possible as we're starting to see a, actually a pretty good climb when it comes to video game movies now at the box office with Sonic 2 doing very, very well. But something strange has happened here with the Super Mario movie. It appears to have been spoiled pretty heavily online. We can see this post, and it, this is just as spoilers, potential plot for the Mario movie. This was posted up on the Mario subreddit, but look at the message below it now. Sorry this post was removed by Reddit's legal operations team. This is in response to a copyright claim by a third party, which, I mean, you start to think about it a bit, who would want this post to be pulled down? Well. Nintendo, yeah. It could also be, I guess, Illumination. I believe that's who they're working with on this movie. And the only reason I could think that they would want to pull it down is if something in there was correct. I mean, there was a lot of information. I'll leave a link to Nintendo Everything who just happened to grab a lot of the info and, and paste it onto their website in case you do want to look into it and see if the whole movie was indeed spoiled well ahead of its eventual release next year. And people are wondering, how is this possible? I mean, the movie, we didn't even see a trailer for this thing. How would someone be able to show up online and just drop all the spoilers there? Well, Jeff Grubb commented on this and he kind of got at what I was uh, assuming happened here. And what, what, we, what happens is typically these movies go through a lot of testing phases. And a lot of times they'll bring people in, audiences will see what they have set up and they'll get responses back, what they liked, what they didn't like, and then they can decide from there, that being Nintendo and Illumination, if they wanna go forward with it or if they have to make some cuts and changes. Most likely they had several test audiences, got a lot of feedback and thought, well, let's actually delay it and do a few changes here to make it better. And typically you leave those kind of focus groups with an NDA in place that you've signed saying, I'm not gonna go around and tell people what I've seen here, especially when it comes to potential plot spoilers, but it only takes one person who decides, eh, whatever, I was just gonna post it anonymously, whether it's to Reddit or 4chan or all these different forums or even just on Twitter even. See that a lot actually on Twitter. A lot of movie spoilers just tend to just pop up there in the timeline. But with something like this, it's pretty in depth. and. It's, it's very possible that all of this did happen, but I will say it doesn't necessarily mean that everything in that thread was correct or it stays in the movie. I mean, they could have decided, you know what, weren't getting good feedback here. We're going to shift things around a bit and maybe they have different endings in place or different twists and, and everything. But if you're curious, like I said, I'll leave a link down below in the sources so you can go read for yourself to see if that is indeed what ends up happening in the movie next year. Next up, let's talk about more studio acquisitions. This continues to come up and I, I don't know if it's just really interesting to people to think about some of these uh, first party companies like a Microsoft or a Sony just buying more studios for that platform but it just seems to be a serious topic of conversation. This one's interesting though, because it had come up before. I think a year and a half ago, we heard that WB Interactive was shopping around some of their studios. And a lot of it came down to, I think it was AT&T and Discovery. There's a lot of companies involved right now looking around and evaluating where their money was going and where their expenses may have been a bit higher. And that ends up probably being staffing many studios for creating video games. It's not cheap to make a big budget title, right? So them looking around and, and looking up and down their list and seeing if anyone may want to buy them isn't too surprising. But we can see this, uh, this from Imran that started everything up again the other day. Couldn't get enough confirmation to actually write a post about it. But hearing a decent bit of chatter this week about WB Discovery shopping their game development studios around. He also names a bunch of interested parties, which includes EA, Take-Two, Microsoft, Sony, Tencent, NetEase, and PUBG Corp. Goes on to also say that WB wants to sell studios and license IPs, which isn't surprising. They probably want to take more of a Disney role where they control the intellectual properties like from the DC universe and just license them out to different companies for studios to create games around. And they just kind of pick up all of the checks with royalties and, and everything there without having to incur the expense of running the studio day to day. Well, if we take a look up and down their list of studios here, you have like some of the big names, obviously Avalanche Software. They're currently working on Hogwarts Legacy coming out later on this year. Monolith Productions, they're working on a Wonder Woman game. NetherRealm Studios, a lot of rumors around them, what they're working on, whether it's a new Mortal Kombat or a new Injustice. Rocksteady Studios is 
for some reason taking like what seems to be seven years to make Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. So I'm really hoping that game delivers because uh, it'd be a shame if they spent all this time working on something that doesn't do well out of the gate. TT Games, who just delivered the best Lego game ever made with the Star Wars Skywalker Saga. And then you get down to WB Games and all of the branches they have in different parts of the US and then also in Canada, that being Montreal, Boston, New York, San Diego, San Francisco. Remember, Montreal is currently working on Arkham Knights. And now there are a lot of people online who have tried to come up with different scenarios where mostly Microsoft or Sony would want to buy one of these studios. And if you look up and down the list, sure, Microsoft, they could probably use NetherRealm. They've been talking about how they would like to make another Killer Instinct. They're just trying to figure out who would be able to do it. NetherRealm, ton of experience with fighting games. Sure, it's like Mortal Kombat and Injustice, but I feel like with their knowledge around creating fighting games, they could probably have a very interesting killer instinct. As for Sony though, like I'm trying to think of why Sony would want Avalanche or Rocksteady or TT Games because at that point you are incurring more expense for the studio that doesn't come with any kind of intellectual property. That's like the biggest hang up I think is when you go to buy a large publisher, you expect a lot of the intellectual properties to come to you as well. But in this case, it would just be studios, developers, which is kind of in short supply as we've seen with job listings all over the place and some games being announced well in advance alongside of the job postings for that game. Just see if people want to get it, be interested in making the new Splinter Cell remake or making the next uh, Max or the Max Payne remakes that they're doing and so on there. So maybe if they feel like, well, we could actually use a larger team to create this game from our back catalog of intellectual properties, they would move on it. But like I said, this came up a year and a half ago. And I think the reason nothing really happened is because WB Games probably had a pretty high price for a package that didn't include any kind of intellectual property control, all licensing on their part, and they're basically just selling you the studio with a bunch of developers there. So we'll see if anything happens here. Like I said, the only one I can really look at and say, yeah, this makes a ton of sense, would be Microsoft trying to pick up NetherRealm so they can finally make a new Killer Instinct. Next up, let's talk about Forza Motorsport. Now, this is a game that Turn 10 is working on with apparently a new engine, and they were targeting specifically next gen or current gen now with the Xbox series lineup. They had shown off a trailer and just had those logos there and they said, hey, it's gonna take a bit longer. They kind of shuffled around the Forza Horizon, Forza Motorsport release schedule to match this, but it looks like an image got out online that's starting to have people question if this truly is just a next gen game or if this will all of a sudden become a cross gen title. This was posted up over on Reddit and I'm not gonna show the screenshot, I'll tell you why in a second, but Forza Motorsport Xbox One, tired of people saying it's next gen only. Here's some pics of the Xbox One build from around last July. They did indeed show images of this. Okay, so the reason I'm not gonna show you the picture is because I know there were there was testing going on for the Xbox One as well as the Xbox Series and there were a lot of agreements in place that said, hey, you can't go around and start showing this stuff off the footage, the screenshots, or even talking about your experience with it. So I wouldn't be shocked if Microsoft, Turn 10, whoever goes around, starts copyright striking, claiming, just wiping this stuff out. Because what we're seeing here is once again, a product that is in the testing phases, which means it's not gonna look as, as polished as it will when it's finished. And we've mentioned, I've talked about this before, right? We've mentioned, oh, some of these companies will do things like the Dead Space remake where they show off a game that is nowhere near ready. It's missing textures, all of this, there's clipping, just to, just to show people the development. But we've seen things like Skate just leak out there showing the gameplay, but visuals that are just completely missing textures. And a lot of these companies don't necessarily wanna show these games in this state. And that's why you have those NDAs. When it comes to the Xbox One version of this, I feel like they were just testing it as that was talked about last year, that they were using Xbox Ones because the Xbox series was so hard to find, but they still wanted to get input on this game. It's all still x86 and they're able to scale and move things around. That doesn't mean that the game is gonna run well enough on the Xbox One VCR for them to feel like it can be cross-gen, but they can get an idea when it comes to bug reports and other fixes they can make with it. So while it is possible that the Xbox One logo could appear on that Forza Motorsport trailer that will inevitably play 
at this Xbox games showcase in June. It's not really something I'm expecting as it looks like they were just mostly doing testing on the Xbox one in a very scaled back state. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Nintendo, the switch and their upcoming financial report that will be covering this previous fiscal year that ended March 31st. And we can head over here, this on the key saying Nintendo expects to sell only about 20 million switch game consoles in the current fiscal year, a 10% decrease from fiscal 2021, despite strong demand. Nikki has learned as a semiconductor shortage and disruptions to logistics networks hamper production. The figure is a 30% decrease from fiscal year 2020 when sales of the Switch hit a peak at 28.83 million units. The number of Switches sold in fiscal 2021 is estimated at 23 million units, a 20% decrease from the previous year. First of all, what a problem to have, right? It's like, well, we can only sell 20 million systems. And it's like, I, I'm sure there are a lot of companies who would love to have that problem right now. But I mean, I guess if you look at it, yeah, technically the switch would be trending downwards, at least in investors eyes. I mean, that's still a lot of systems to sell, but if you plot it out, yeah, it looks like the switch is losing momentum or popularity, but you then look around and you still can't find a switch OLED easily in any stores. It's almost always sold out and you're not going to really see an Xbox series X or a PS five either, which comes back to the chip shortage. Yeah, so I, I still think 2023 is gonna be the earliest that we see this kind of get resolved and maybe start to see like Switch OLEDs or PS5 or Xbox Series X even have a chance to show up in stores, which means we're gonna have a forecast from Nintendo that's not gonna be favorable for investors coming up here. And of course, that's gonna start the whole thing with is Nintendo in trouble with all this? I will say, it is very strange to be this far into a system's life and still not be able to find it on store shelves. And who's not to say that Nintendo says, you know what, we're also gonna have another a revision of some kind, or does this mess up those plans? Does this make Nintendo think, okay, we have to push off next gen plans because we have to just be able to get the Switch out to store shelves in general? A lot of factors in play here, a lot of things really changing in the background. So, I mean, we'll see what Nintendo reports May 10th, but, Right now, I don't think it's gonna be great news overall for investors. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, are you planning on seeing the Mario movie in theaters? 40% said yes, 60% said no. The reason I ran this poll now, and I didn't include a maybe, is because I want us to see where we all are now, and then after we get the first trailer, Ask again and see if that swayed any votes here. So about 60, 40 right now. We'll see if that trailer can maybe flip this around to more yeses than noes. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Carlos saying a little bit of a correction for Yuji Naka. The current video game industry is full of companies that don't care about games nor their fans. They just care about lining their pockets with the least effort possible and make it pass as full blown products. Well, I mean, all these video game companies, yes, they are here for the money, not to make friends or have fun. I think Yuji Naka was looking at this from a, a spot of frustration and anger even because of what happened, obviously full court case, all of this being removed at six months prior to it coming out, the game. But I also think Square probably looked at Battle and Wonderworld and was like, this, this isn't gonna get better. So we just need to get this thing out the door. I almost wonder if they did the same thing with Babylon's Fall, but they're doing like, several more seasons and stuff that they're signed on for with uh, Platinum. So Square's weird. They release some really good games, Final Fantasy coming to mind, right? But then they'll have like this Battle in Wonder World or they'll have this Babylon's Fall or Avengers. It's just, it's this weird Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of company here. But one thing's for sure, they wanted Battle in Wonder World out as fast as possible. And it was weird that they put that $60 price tag on it because even they had to have known that game wasn't finished. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was a Super Mario movie coming out now in 2023, but spoilers already popped up online. And then who do you think ripped down that Reddit post using uh, DMCA? And then also what about all these studio acquisition rumors going around? Who do you think should come in and buy say Rocksteady or NetherRealm Studios. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.